One of my most favorite parts of having this YouTube channel and having social media presence on Instagram and TikTok is the amazing emails that I get and the questions that come from all of you. So today I'm going to cover off a really interesting question, and I think relevant for so many of us, and that is about um, coffee. And just like you, I've enjoyed my coffee over the years. And a question that I got from somebody who's relatively new to the channel, and um, I always love that because that means you're engaged and you love what you're exploring and starting to question what we do and why we do what we're doing. So the question was about coffee and the email read something like this. Uh, a few months ago, I decided to let go of coffee and I'm over the worst part of the withdrawal, headaches and jittery and feeling like I was in a rough mood all day long. And now that I'm a month out, I'm starting to notice that I have this craving for the flavor of it, just you know, that first couple of sips of coffee in the morning. And I know, because now I've been off of it for a while, that it really leads me to some bad feelings, causes me some discomfort in my brain or in my belly. And I don't think I want that back. And yet the craving for that first sip of coffee, it remains. <sighs> can you relate? Because I can, for sure. And um, truth be told, I've had my times where I'm on coffee and then not on coffee at all and notice the exact same thing. So first of all, I want to give you some resources for that, which are already here on my channel. The first one is a video called Doubt versus Desire. And I think that will help to round out the picture around why we do what we do. And the other one is the meditation for addictions. And you'll find both of those here already posted on my channel. So go ahead and look for those. And here is a nuance that I wanted to offer. Um, so there's this craving for that first sip of coffee. And then there's this full knowing that it's actually not that great for me. And I know it because I have proof that it's not that great for me. And yet I continue. And yet I may go on and go off and try it and try and get off of it. And, and there goes the dance between the substance or the habit or the belief and us being human in our experience. And so I want to offer you this as a thinking point for yourself, a place of self-reflection, maybe even something that you go and journal is to really ask yourself, what is the craving about? Is it fully and completely about the caffeine and about that ritual of making a cup of coffee, sitting down, drinking it, reading the paper or scrolling, whatever you do alongside that particular habit, because all habits have a cohabit. They have other habits that go with them. If you're a smoker, you know, their coffee generally will go with that. Um, if you're a toker, then other things like potato chips go with that. So we have the habit, we have the cohabits, the beliefs, the self-soothing that goes along with that habit. And we also have the feeling that comes afterwards, which is the dysregulation. So I wanna ask you, which one is stronger? Is the addiction to the caffeine? Is it the addiction to the caffeine and the rituals around that or is it the addiction to dysregulation? And when I ask myself that question about some of the things that I do in my life, it always comes down to where is my comfort zone? Is my comfort more invested in the outcome, meaning feeling dysregulated, feeling sad or lonely or unworthy or lack? And generally speaking, the addiction is just the symptom, remember? And so I want to offer this to you as a thinking spot. What is that addiction actually to? Is it to the dysregulation? And if it is to the dysregulation, what kind of work can I do in my nervous system in order to allow this habit to be released? In, in other words, the attraction towards regulation can be even just a smidge 
more than the dysregulation, we start to see ourselves move into permanently changing those habits. And remember, again, those are superficial. They are the things that we do to cover up the symptoms underneath. They're just the, the substance. But to really think about what is fueling that. And if we can get in there by journaling, by really looking at our true values, our core central beliefs about ourselves, questioning that, being in community, having conversation about it, learning from others, regulating your body system, using all this Kundalini yoga stuff here on this channel, I think you'll have your pathway into much bigger and better and more decisive answers. I hope that was helpful for you. My name is Salima, yoga therapist. Like and follow for more. Share this if you found it helpful. And of course, if you're looking for more connection, more ways to connect with me directly, I invite you to book a numerology consult. That's a really deep, profound, spiritual way to engage in dialogue. Number two is meditation as medicine to really prop up this conversation with yourself by turning inwards, using lots of different techniques to do that. That's an online program, self-paced. And the other option is to do Kundalini yoga teacher training. So there you have it. Lots of different ways for us to work together. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Drop me a letter, drop a comment be below. My email is love.yogavision at gmail.com. Bye for now.